This is my 57th video on my work with OO Gauge. See part 1 of this series for my reasons for getting into OO Gauge when I already had a lot invested in working in N Gauge and I didn't really have space available for a large fully operational OO Gauge layout. Also see my lengthy series on my N Gauge railway modeling for smaller and more complex scenery and smaller scale trains running. This part is the 31st dealing with my third layout made using mainly Hornby set track. See the prior video, part 27, for my reasons for wanting to try a Hornby set track layout when I already had an OO gauge layout using Bachmann Easy Track. This part deals with detailing the station on my Hornby layout by adding station name boards, platform lamps, benches, posters, luggage trolleys, etc., and also people, station staff, and passengers. I had been putting off detailing my station for a while, largely because I was still waiting for some items to be delivered, and as you'll see, quite a lot of different items were involved in this process, but also I had a bit of a tendency to put this process off as, though it's certainly interesting, at least to me, it's also quite complex and challenging in some aspects, so I was a bit nervous about doing it. I did get some of the preliminary work for items required done in previous videos, see part 41, where I sorted out and assembled some of the detailing items, such as platform lamps and the water tower. In my previous video, part 56, I built platform kiosks for the station, as seen here from the Daypole previously Airfix plastic kit. So, with those kiosks placed on the platforms, my station was looking like this. The platforms were built from the Metcalf brick platform card kit. The station buildings were built from Superquick kits, their country station kit for the main station building on the near side, and their island platform building kit for the buildings on the far platform. At the far left, you can just see the base of the footbridge linking the two platforms, which was built from the Airfix Daypole plastic kit. There's another footbridge at the other end from a Hornby kit, but that one is on the ground beyond the end of the platforms rather than on the platforms themselves, as its span was too wide to fit with the spacing that I wanted for my platforms. Otherwise, at this point, the station was bare, deserted and empty apart from those buildings themselves. I had quite a variety of items ready to use in detailing the station, a Wills kit of platform accessories, four sets of LMS posters from trackside signs, a springside kit for fire buckets with stands, metal station name boards from P&D Marsh, three different types of platform lamps, a Pico water tower, some Pico milk churns, and several sets of figures for station staff and passengers. I started by completing the preparation of items with assembly and painting where required. This is the springside set for fire buckets with their stands, an essential item on stations. I've done this kit before. It's quite fiddly to work with, as there's no way that the buckets will actually hang on the stand, so each bucket needs to be individually glued in place. Some extra metal from the casting process needs to be removed first also. I glued each bucket in place with a drop of CA glue where the handle of the bucket met the stand. Definitely a delicate process. I stuck the stands into chunks of tack putty to hold them whilst I glued the buckets on. Then I spray painted the whole thing's bright red. I picked out the F's on the buckets with black Sharpie marker. I could have used a fine brush, but I had more confidence in doing it neatly with the Sharpie. I did use a fine brush to paint the surface of the water in the buckets grey. After all, it wouldn't make much sense for the water itself to be red. This will set of platform accessories also needed assembly and painting. The set provides four sprues of plastic parts, two grey and two white, and a sheet of paper signs. Just printed paper, not decals. Assembly was simple, and the only instructions were the little diagrams on the packing card. I will say this for Wills, the parts were extremely well cast, very sharp and with no flesh at all. 
They just needed to be carefully cut from their sprues and then to have the remains of the attachment gates cleaned up. The small wheels glued onto the ends of the axles underneath the larger luggage carts. The ends of the smaller trolleys glued to their main sections. The benches had five parts each, a seat, a back and three uprights. The seats and backs had small bosses on their backs to help in situating the uprights. It was pretty fiddly getting the edges of the uprights to glue between the bosses. I did the end uprights first, and then I glued the center uprights in place as the final step. The pulling handles for the larger trolleys glued into the brackets at the front. For the smaller trolleys, the side handles glued underneath, up against the ends of the raised sections. The little machines came as two halves, which simply needed to be glued together. I'm not really clear what those are supposed to be. Chocolate vending machines, perhaps? Finally, the larger wheels glue over the sides of the smaller trolleys, and those items are completely assembled. The kit only supplied two sets of supporting posts, and the diagram indicated that these are for use with the station name boards. But I had P&D Marsh Metal name boards and wasn't intending to use the boards from this Wills kit, so I used the supporting posts for two of the advertising hoardings for which no supports were provided in the kit. I had a set of Pico platform benches, which were clearly labelled as OOHO scale when I bought them, but looking at those Pico benches beside the Wills benches, it seemed that the Pico benches were ridiculously small and really probably engage. So I gave up on the Pico benches, but that left me short, and I really didn't want to wait for more items to be delivered at this point. So I cobbled together two more benches from pieces of leftover card from the laser cut sheet of a Metcalf kit. I cut strips for the seats and backs, and then made uprights based on a simplification of the Wills benches, and glued them together with rocket card glue. I think those will look more sensible on a platform than the Pico benches would have. I made bases for the fire bucket stands by gluing together pieces of leftover Metcalf heavy card and then drilling appropriate sized holes. I painted those bases grey. I finished the Will's benches in brown. I painted the trolleys and vending machines. To tell the truth, I really don't like brush painting and avoid it wherever I can. I use spray painting, markers, glued on textures or whatever. I'm just not very good at fine brush painting. It's so easy to slip or shake too much and get paint where you don't want it. But sometimes it's the only way, as it pretty much was for finishing these items. This is the sheet of paper signs that came with the Wills kit. I had mixed feelings about them, but some of them were quite nice. I cut out some of the advertisements and also the small timetable pieces. The Wills sheet didn't provide anything for the headers of the timetable boards, so I made my own LMS header pieces on my PC. I cut out my headers and glued them in place together with the Wills timetables. The Wills timetable pieces really didn't fit into the sections of the timetable boards, and even shaving their edges I struggled to get them neatly in place. I glued the Wills advertisements onto the boards and coloured the supporting posts. I wanted to use the passenger sign about the bridge, but the Wills kit provided no board to fit this, so I made a board from leftover pieces of Metcalf laser cut material. I spray painted the P&D Marsh Station name boards brown on both sides. I was using two different styles of board. This was simply because British model trains where I bought the boards didn't have two sets of a single style available. Well, actually, they did have two sets of what P&D Marsh call LMS boards, but those are the later Hawks Eye design, which I don't believe was in common use in my period, the 1930s. 
I scanned the boards at 600 dpi and then created names to fit that scan in a graphics program on my PC. I had previously determined what colour would best approximate the LMS Crimson on my printer. I had decided to call my station Kirby Muxlow. This is a place near to where I grew up in Leicester. It had a two-line railway station, which was originally part of the very early Leicester and Swannington Railway, and which became an LMS station upon amalgamation in 1923. Kirby Muxlow was close to the even more interestingly named Ashby de la Zouche, and I did consider using that as my station name, but it would have been very long to fit on the name boards, so I went with Kirby Muxlow, which was easier to work with. Here's an old hand-tinted postcard of the real Kirby Muxlow station. The photograph on which this is based would have been taken well before my period, probably sometime around the start of the 20th century. I cut out my printed names and glued them to the boards using rocket card glue. Now that all those items were ready to go, I put them aside in a tray. I got out the platform lamps that I had, eight made from a Pico plastic kit, four pre-painted P&D Marsh metal ones, and a set of black ones wired with grain of wheat bulbs. I had quite a number of sets of painted figures. I got them all out of their packages and repaired them a bit where necessary, where they were broken off their bases or their legs were broken. I had tried to pick up suitable painted figures as I struggled to paint little OO gauge figures. Not that all of the painting on these figures is super excellent, but it's mostly probably better than I could do. I did try to get figures that would be appropriate to my 1930s period. From what I had, I sorted out those that seemed the best to use. The group at back right are station staff. At front left are what I could identify in the way of appropriate passengers. At back left are trades types, postmen, hotel porters, workmen, etc. And so I brought the first platform down from the layout to be worked on. I decided to do the far platform first. When I detailed the stations on my backman layout, I forgot about the footbridge and so I couldn't put the bridge back in place after the detailing as other things were in the way. I didn't make the same mistake this time, bringing the Daypole footbridge down so that I could take it into account when fitting details. I started by deciding where to place the items that would not normally be movable, name boards, lamps, benches, and the water tower. I figured that the water tower should be right at the departing end of the platform. The station name boards should be close to the ends of the platform as their main purpose would be to allow people arriving at the station to know where they were. The lamps should be spaced out along the platform, centrally placed to illuminate best. I figured that the canopy would have its own illumination so I didn't place lamp posts there. Then the benches were placed where most convenient between those other items. This was all just a preliminary plan at this point, with nothing fixed yet. I checked from pictures where real station name boards were most commonly placed. More often than not, it seemed, they were up against the back wall or fence of the platform, and this made sense. Also, it was easier to support the boards well in this position. I drilled appropriately sized holes with a pin vise and inserted the pins on the base of the board posts into the platform, which was quite fiddly to do. I used Woodland Scenic Scenic Accents glue to fix many of the items in place, though I also used Rocket Card glue in some cases. The Pico lamps and the benches were glued down. For the P&D Marsh metal lamps, a hole was drilled in the platform first. Here are the lamps and the bench at the other end of the platform. The Scenic Accents glue does dry clear, so those unsightly white patches will go away when the glue dries. It says on the package of the Scenic Accents glue that you can just place items and won't need to hold them in place. I didn't really find this to be the case. I found that items definitely tended to move and it was quite tricky to get them to stay where I wanted them. 
The water tower is also glued in place with scenic accents. I stuck the passenger sign about the bridge to the back of the platform end ramp with rocket car glue. This will place it up against the Hornby Bridge on the layout. I put an advertising sign from the Wills kit up against the back wall of the platform. The Super Creek buildings came with various posters pre-printed on them, but I didn't really want those, as they were generally either British Railways items or ads for Super Creek themselves. I had bought sets of LMS posters from Trackside Signs, I went with their pre-cut and self-adhesive signs. Those are a little bit more expensive, but definitely much easier to use. I bought the Trackside Signs Economy Pack with all four sets of LMS station signs, giving me plenty of choice. Trackside Signs will also do custom printing of station names, etc. for you, but I went with doing that myself. I stuck items from the trackside sign sets over all of the posters on the walls of the Superquick buildings. I also glued the timetable board from the Will set in place, seen at left here. With all of the more permanent items in place on the platform, I added figures and mobile items such as trolleys. I glued everything in place as I didn't want things falling over when the board shook a bit. It was a bit tricky to find a place for the fire buckets. There wasn't really a convenient place where they wouldn't hide a sign or obstruct windows. I tried to place my figures in what might look a reasonable part of station activity. Here's the far end of the platform towards the Dave Hall footbridge. With that far platform done, I put that one aside and brought the near platform and the main station building down to the bench. I glued the kiosk in place and fitted the station name boards by drilling holes in the platform. Here's the name board at the other end of that platform. I used the trackside signs posters to cover the pre-printed signs on the Superquick Country Station building. This is the platform side of the main building with the awning and waiting rooms temporarily removed. The Will's timetable board is on the side of the building. Then I put trackside signs posters on the waiting rooms and glued them with their awning in place as they did tend to fall over otherwise. I went on to place the platform lamps as on the other platform. I put the P&D marsh metal lamps closest to the centre buildings and then the Pico plastic lamps farther along. I put my fabricated benches between the lamps on this platform. I placed the fire buckets for this platform on the end of one of the waiting rooms, unfortunately obscuring a sign, but I had to put that there to hide a pre-printed sign that I wanted to hide. I put the little vending machine beside a waiting room door. Then I added figures to this platform and also items such as trolleys. I tried to place the figures with some sense that they were actually doing something. Here's the other end of that platform after adding the figures. At this point I also glued a few figures in place on the Daypole footbridge. It's hard to make figures actually look as though they're climbing the steps. And here are both platforms and the Daypole bridge back on the layout. Here my camera decided to focus on the near platform and the bridge rather than on the far platform. Because the station is right at the back of the layout against the wall, the detail on the far platform is generally going to be far more visible. I didn't put any advertising boards on the wall of the near platform as only their backs would normally have been seen. It's definitely nice to see some sort of action on the station. Here I tried to take a picture from the point of view of a train entering the station. It didn't work too well with this camera. I'll mount a camera on a train and take some video at some point. Some of the bases on the figures are slightly visible, but generally they don't really stand out and the effect isn't too bad. Here's the general view across to the station now. I do really wish I'd made a better job of mounting the backing scene. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. 
Lots of fences, walls, trees, and miscellaneous vegetation, etc., would really help to make things a bit more realistic.